Hi, Will here from aerialmediapros.com, and lately we've been getting a lot of calls from customers who have been having issues with their data link, specifically their BTU unit not connecting to their iPad. And today I want to show you a quick troubleshoot guide so that we can get your copter up and ready in the air. Let's get started. Now, the number one problem that customers are having is an improperly configured BTU unit. So here we have a properly functioning data link right here. We're going to plug this in, turn everything on. And I'm just going to show you the correct light sequence that should be showing up. Let's wait a little bit. Here we have the green blinking LED for the BTU. This means the BTU is working properly and it's waiting for an iPad connection. Here we have the data link right here, the ground in, and it should always have a, a green LED for link, and it should have a corresponding green LED for the air end on the copter as well. Um, TX and RX LED should blink red and then for the air end it should do the same thing and this means there's activity in the air end and the ground end are talking to each other. Now the second uh, most uh, common issue is that the BTU is not blinking green. We are getting a red LED sequence, uh, blinking red or solid red. Uh, this means the BTU is not properly configured and then right off the bat you're not going to get any iPad connectivity if you have the red LED. Uh, we need to get this to go away first of all. Now there's three common issues that the BTU could be having that would cause the green LED to go away and for you to have a red LED. Number one, uh, this is the most common problem is, is that the firmware needs to be updated. Number two, the last firmware that was updated on it was installed improperly or something malfunctioned along the way and needs to be reflashed. Number three, which is the worst case scenario because it will cost you money, is you'll need to entirely replace the BTU unit. Um, so let's just get our laptop up here. And uh, we'll plug in our data link. So you'll need the series connections of USB. So this USB has two ends and they both need to be plugged into the computer. And then the other end will go right into the data link. We now have it turned on and we'll go onto the computer from here. Now, in order to update the BTU air end or the ground end, we need to go over to DJI's website right here. And we need to download the uh, drivers and the, the, um, the assistant. So let's go over to for experts tab, go down. Uh, we are gonna do the iPad ground station. So click here then over to downloads, scroll down. Uh, you need the driver installer and the assistant installer and unfortunately these are only EXEs and will only be able to run on Windows computers so if you do not have Windows uh, you need to be able to find a PC or find some way to do it. Um, go ahead and grab those and install those and then we've already had these installed so we we have this ready to go and then once we're ready to do this and we got them all installed. We go over here, uh, click on the data link icon, it should come up. Then go ahead and plug in that USB port into your data link again. So there we go. Now we do have connectivity. Always look for that in the bottom left hand corner. You got the green light and then you got the activity LED right there. Uh, that tells us that we're connected and uh, we can update firmware. Now the air end has been on the same firmware for a while and will always say new version available but once you plug it in uh, there won't be a new version available for it uh, so just go ahead and ignore that. This is on the latest version now we could always reflash this if, if we need to if it's not working uh, but for this one right here we need to uh, download the new version for the BTU so let's go ahead and do that now. So just wait a little bit because it's downloading from DJI's servers So here it's asking, do you really want to upgrade the firmware? Yes, we do. We need to make sure that we do not unplug this or power off the unit in this moment. Um, you could end up breaking your component. And so after this, it just asked me if I uh, to, um, to power cycle the device. So we'll do that now. So go ahead and unplug it. Then unplug it back in to see if the BTU updated successfully. This has come up before in the past, 
Um, it's on the new firmware. It's just when uh, you update it or you uploaded it onto your computer, it'll say uh, it needs a new version, but it's already been updated. Okay, now if problems persist, I'm gonna teach you how to also reflash uh, hardware that are on the current firmware. So for instance, this ground in transmitter is on the latest version 1.0.15. So let's just go ahead and click on that again. And then it should download the firmware again from DGI server. And then you can just do upgrade. Uh, this isn't technically an upgrade. This is just technically uh, re-uploading the same firmware on there. So it could be a cleaner install and it could fix some problems. Okay, now that we got all the firmware up to date, let's check to see if it actually works with the LED indicators. Um, this is the best way to know if, uh, if the data link's ready for iPad use. So let's go ahead and plug everything in and make sure it all works together. We got green lights down here, green light on BTU, all green on ear in as well. So now we are ready to go on to the iPad and showing you how to set it up. All right, now that we have our iPad out, let's go ahead and turn it on. And then let's go over here to settings. We'll need to turn on the Bluetooth setting. But do not search for device. Uh, this is not how we hook up the data link. I know it's a little weird because most conventional devices that use Bluetooth will come up this way by searching for Bluetooth devices, but that's not for this instance. We need to download the DJI Ground Station app from the App Store and then go ahead and start that up. And then now this will actually look for the Ground Station itself. So there you go. You got the main controller comes up as new, you can press on it, and then you'll be able to name it and set a password for your own data link. All right guys, that's it. Thank you for watching my tutorial on the data link. This should get your data link working properly and connecting to your iPad accordingly. Now, if you like the products in this video, like the Ag Pro Scout or the data link itself, these products are available at aerialmediapros.com. And if you wanna learn more about the data link, click on the video on the left of me. If you like this video, go ahead and like it. If you dislike this video, please leave a comment on why you dislike this video so that way we can improve on future videos. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.